I hear Ethereum is moving to proof of stake. It's great. But is it great news? No, it's not news. It's, proof of stake is fantastic, but it's all news. When I got really interested in cryptocurrencies back in 2011, I was looking at Bitcoin, I was looking at innovations uh, around it. I look at consensus algorithms and I look at CBIL prevention mechanism. One technique is to use energy. Everyone who spends energy is going to be part of the consensus group. And that worked well for Bitcoin, but it's costly, right? If you want to secure the network, you need to constantly incentivize people to be burning this energy. And how are you going to do that? Well, you can do it with block reward, which are inflationary, or you can do it with transaction fees, but you have to jack up the price of transaction fees really high if you want to secure the network. And even then, that's assuming people are not going to use alternative networks or even um, channels like the Nightingale network. So proof of stake made more sense. It had better incentives, better security properties. Yes, the security properties of proof of work and proof of stake are different. You lose some property with proof of stake. You lose one. You lose the properties that if you connect to the network for the very first time, or at least the very first time in a long time, you connect to the network, you might see different chains and you might not know which one is a real one. Now, once you connect to a chain, it's going to be secure. You know it's going to be the right one. Is that a very important property? Well, if you're a very small, obscure chain, maybe, but if you're a pillar of commerce, no. You know, the right chain is the one that's being accepted by the merchant you're trying to pay in the first place. It's pretty much a non-issue, and all the other security properties you gain out of proof of stake are much better. You see, the problem is it's cheap to think in trade-offs. Everyone, it's, it's, it's an easy way to sound smart by making a trade-off, saying, oh, yes, yes. Proof of stake is uh, is better for the environment, or is you know is cheaper, but of course its security properties are not as good as proof of work, because if you make it a trade off, then you know you can think about like oh what do you prefer, what's more valuable, it makes for a more interesting discussion. If you have better security properties and lower cost, then it's too obvious. Why would some people be you know using proof of work? But that's just the case. The security properties that are better, you can better deal with attacks in a proof of stake network. You have better incentives. It works. And it's been working for a while, too. There were pioneers that didn't quite work out. You know, PeerCoin didn't work. PeerCoin had a nothing at stake problem. NXT worked better, much better, but it didn't have any economic incentives for people not to cheat. The first proof of stake protocol that launched with economic incentive not to cheat with uh, some form of flashing was Tezos. Now, Tezos was designed in 2014. It had a test in 2016. The chain launched in 2018. It's been running with proof of stake for the past four years. But we're not the only one. We were joined by Cosmos and Polkadot and Avalanche and countless other chains. Proof of stake today is the industry standard. So the merge is a great event, but it's the event of Ethereum catching up with the rest of the entire industry. It's not leading. And somehow I, you don't really see this in the media. The media is under the impression that somehow this is this big uh, Ethereum event. No, it's, Ethereum is catching up. Again, good news. So. If proof of stake itself is not news, what is news? And I think what's news is scaling. We're seeing across the board really interesting scaling IDs being pushed. And those IDs, of course, are being implemented in Tezos. But the Tezos implementation is different. It's different because it's not relying on companies backed by VCs that will sell you a token in order to scale. It's not reliant on you having to run a very, very powerful machine to participate in a network. It's based on decentralization so that you can still connect to the network and validate it with just one Raspberry Pi. It's based on economic integrity in a sense that the only token you need to participate in Tezos is Tez. And it's based on a sensible design. You see, Ethereum has been mucking around with many designs. In 2017, uh, Ethereum was very, very focused on sharding. I wrote a blog post at the time explaining why I wasn't interested in this sharding strategy. And I described something which today is uh, more popularly implemented as a ZK rollup. I believe today optimistic rollups are the way to go. But optimistic rollup, which are implemented within the protocol, which are enshrined in the protocol, which are part of the economic unit of the chain, not a product where you have to buy a token for a VC to use it. So that's the future. That's what's interesting. Having chains which are accessible by everyone because transactions do not cost you hundreds of dollars to make, but pennies or even less than that. Over the course of the next year, I'm super excited to see Tezos grow in its uh, scaling uh, 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 abilities. We're going to see new applications uh, empowered by uh, this very large throughput. 
and we're going to see really, really cool design. But what's more important than that is that this is not being centrally planned. This is not being centrally decided. The Tezos protocol evolves based on a real governance model. There's not someone who decided that a merge would happen on that date. And oh, by the way, it's your free choice. You know, you can either install the hard forks that we told you to install, or if you don't, you're going to be left alone by the network. Fork-based governance is not a real choice. It's centrally controlled choice. Blockchain should not be centralized. And decisions around the technological content and the integrity of the protocol should not be left in the hands of developers. They should be in the hands of the communities. And Tezos has done this successfully. Tezos has had more than 10 major upgrades happen with the vote of the participants, with the vote of the bakers, with the vote of the token holders, with really high participation rates. I don't think there's a point in building those systems if they're not going to be decentralized. You know, if, if you don't want decentralization, use a database. They are very, very good for a lot of uh, applications. But if decentralization is going to matter, and maybe it won't, maybe 10 years from now we realize it was all a silly experiment and we didn't need any decentralization after all. But if it does, then you need to have it and you need to take it seriously. And that means taking proof of stake seriously from the beginning, not as a vague promise that you implement six, eight years after. It means taking governance seriously. It means taking scaling seriously. And that's, I think, what, we'll, what we're seeing and what we have seen in, uh, in the Tezos protocol. So thank you for watching. And to Ethereum, welcome to the Proof of Stake Club.